Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today I'm here with our newest project car, this 2003 Lexus IS300 Sport Cross. In today's video, we're going to go over those 10 items that you should check and potentially replace before diving deeper into enjoying your first generation Lexus IS300. First thing we're going to do is check our tire pressures. If you don't know what pressure your tire should be at, check your door jam. And remember to check your tire pressures when your tires are cold. Don't drive your car, don't warm it up, and then check it afterwards. So if you've driven it, give it at least several hours to cool down. I like to check my tire pressures first thing in the morning. I am using a simple manual tire pressure gauge. There's a whole bunch of gauges out there that you can use. I'll leave some links in the description below. 33, 33, and 33. I'm gonna do that for all the tires. Remember the back ones are recommended to be set at 35 PSI. Surprisingly, all the tire pressures are set perfectly, so I don't have to do any adjustments. I have noticed that all of the rims, all four rims, have a lot of curb damage, which isn't surprising for a 20 plus year old car. Contemplating whether I should repair all four of the rims or if I should just buy new ones. What do you think? Should I fix them or should I just get new rims on this car? Next step is to test the tread depth on our tires to see how much life I have left on them, or if I have to replace the tires. So I am using this tread depth meter. I like this one. I like the fact that it has the different colors, green, red, yellow, indicating how much life is left. And of course it has the numbers as well, but a simple visual with the colors, uh, I like. So let's push this all the way down, zero it out. And we're gonna read in several places, both in the middle of the tire and towards the edges because the edges could be wearing out a little bit quicker than the center. So let's just get a couple readings. And yes, I think in our first video, I indicated there's no modifications on this car. That was a lie. There's actually technically three modifications. The windows were tinted. That was a modification. Uh, there is a Atato head unit. I'm not familiar with them doesn't work very well. I'm going to have to replace it. So the head unit was replaced, but also it is running tan Flex Z coilovers on the car. That's the reason why there's minimal gap here. We're looking pretty good. We have some good life left on the tires. We're at anywhere between nine, let's say eight and nine. I think we're good, at least for the front driver's side. I'm gonna go around and check them all and see if they're consistent. We're doing all right with our tires. Definitely some life left. Front tires have more tread than the rear, as one would expect considering it's a rear wheel drive car. Remember, we have two different sizes, so I can't swap the rear tires with the front and vice versa. They're gonna have to stay where they are, so no tire rotation for me which next on the list is checking our brake pad width. So we're gonna see how much life is in our brake pads. And I'm gonna use this simple, easy tool, inexpensive. Like I said, with the other tools, I'll leave a link in the description below. So all we're doing here is we're inserting the tips, the tip of these measurements, and each one has a measurement from 12 millimeters all the way down to two millimeters. And by the way, not all brake pads brand new come with 12 millimeters. With that said, you're trying to insert the tip in between the metal of the pad shoe or the pad itself and how much is left between the rotor. So we have our brake caliper here. We have our pads within here. We'll insert the plastic calipers inside here. And again, we'll try to measure how much we have left. This is gonna be very difficult. 
for me to show you visually. So I may just show you some examples that I found online of what we're doing. I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news is the rear brakes are clearly in the red, so they need to be replaced pretty quickly. Good news is the front pads are in the yellow, so not as concerning. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, if you found it entertaining, if you wanna help support the Lemon Factor, please consider hitting that super thanks button that can be found at the bottom of the video. Next up is reading our battery voltage to see how healthy it is, see if we have to replace it or not. Visually, it looks like a fairly new clean battery, but we just want to make sure I have a multimeter which we'll use to read the voltage. What we're looking for with the car turned off is approximately 12 volts. It does have a sticker here that says April of 17, so I don't know if that's the actual date probably otherwise i don't know why this is here but if this is 17 it is a little over six years old and that's a little concerning i would probably want to replace our battery let's just make sure that they're relatively clean which they are looks like we have good contact what you'd also want to do is just make sure that they're tight and the negative looks pretty clean as well so it does look good it's at 12.56 volts, which is what we're looking for. Anyway. Next on our list is to check the washer fluid. Although this is quite small and visually there's no way for me to tell how much is in it. I'm just gonna top it off. <laughs> Guess it really didn't need it. Now we're gonna check the engine air filter and if it's dirty, we'll replace it. Three clips. Flip that open and this should pop out. Does look dirty, not horrible. I've seen much worse. Definitely sandy. So we'll just replace this with our new one. A lot cheaper than paying Lexus to replace your engine air filter. Super easy, do it yourself. You saw it was just three clips, slide it out, buy one of these for less than 20 bucks and you're all set. And just slide it in. Just put the top back on. I know it's dirty. I just washed it. It's winter time, what do you expect? And the car kind of sits under a pine tree. Anyway. Next up is the wiper blades. I've tested them. They seem okay, but I'm just gonna replace them with brand new ones. I do like the Bosch Icon. I've used these on other cars. They don't squeak. They do a good job and they seem to last quite a while. And remember on the Sport Cross here, I have a rear wiper blade that I need to replace. The passenger side is a little shorter than the driver's side, which is typical. So on the icon, just open this up and then we'll slide this through to hook it in place. So opened up. And then it's going to hook right around that. There we go. Now we're headed into the cabin of the car. We're going to replace the cabin air filter and that is located behind the glove box. Tab here and then the other one over on the other side. Push them towards one another and then you can swing the, the glove box down. Now behind here is your air cabin air filter. The panel pops right off. Just squeeze it, pop it off. Don't drop it down there. Just rest it here. Here's your filter. Looks like it hasn't been replaced in quite some time. I'm glad I got a new one. Just remove the filter itself. Keep this tray. So this is where 
the filter sits into. I know this is still a little dirty. I'll do a full detail at a later date. We'll clean up everything. But with that said, it does, doesn't look too bad in here. Just make sure there's no debris down underneath where the fans are. If there is, remove that. So let's grab our new filter. And all you do is set that in there. Make sure it goes the same way you took it out, this end up. Slide that back into place and hopefully, if you have any odors, that this will help resolve that. If you enjoy this, you wanna see more content on the Lexus IS300 or maybe one of our other two cars, the Honda Accord 2.0 Touring or the Mark V Toyota GR Supra, please consider subscribing, turn on notifications and share. So because I have no idea when the last time the battery was replaced in our two keys that I received, we're gonna pop these open I'm going to test the battery and replace the batteries if need be. And lastly, at least for today, at least for our 10 initial checklist items, we're gonna give this car an oil change. So I'm gonna go out and drive it for a little bit, warm it up, get the oil circulating so it's nice and warm and it flows freely. I'm gonna do that, we'll come back, we'll do an oil change. I'm gonna take a sample, I'm gonna send off the oil to Blackstone to have it tested to see what's going on within this engine and I'm going to install a magnetic drain plug just so we can keep an eye on things in the future. I'm gonna take the car out, just drive it for five minutes, bring it back, give it a couple minutes to cool down, and then I'm gonna check the oil level, make sure that it's just right. And after we have it perfect, that'll conclude our 10 items that I wanna go over before I start getting deeper into this car. So I'm going to be changing the automatic transmission fluid, the differential fluid, the brake fluid. Obviously I need new brakes, so I gotta put new brakes on the car. There's plenty of other regular maintenance updates that I want to make to the car, OEM, to make sure that this car is in tip-top shape before we add any modifications to it. So if you're interested in finding out how to do that maintenance, or if you're interested to see what modifications we do with our new 2003 Lexus IS300 Sport Cross, then stay tuned. <laughs> 